Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and today I'm going to give you an update on our database actions interface updates for when you're working with your JSON documents in an Oracle database. So I have a previous video where I introduced this feature uh, late in 2020 and we've done a lot of really nice enhancements to the interface in the last six months and I wanted to give you all an update. So uh, check on the link in the description to get caught up on what we did last year, or just sit back and relax and I'll give you a tour of what's possible today. So database actions, or what was formerly known as SQL Developer Web, is a single page web application delivered by Oracle REST Data Services, or ORDS. And when you connect ORDS with your Oracle database, we will make certain features available based on your um, authenticated users' privileges and roles in the database. So for most developers, if they have the Soda app role, they should see this JSON card in the um, homepage, or what we call the launch pad. And this is what I mean um, when I talk about the JSON document store. Here I have a user interface where I can create collections, or you can think of a collection as a table that houses multiple JSON documents. But instead of thinking in terms of rows and columns and using SQL to do inserts and updates and deletes. Uh, I have a collection that I can use this uh, simple Oracle document API or the Soda API uh, to make JSON calls again. So I can say create collection, um, get collection, post this document to the collection, put or replace this document in my collection, uh, that sort of thing. And we have really nice drivers and REST APIs that developers can use in their applications to work directly with these collections and documents that are being stored in their Oracle database. But if you want to go into the database as a just a normal database user and kind of click around to see what's in your collections, then this interface is really nice for that. So I don't have to memorize the Soda APIs. I can click on a collection to see what's in it, and I can click a button to upload documents if I want and even more than that. So that's what I want to give you a tour of right now. So if this is the first time you've ever been in the screen, you'll be presented this uh, guided tour interface. And I won't bore you with this, but it kind of takes you through the nuts and bolts of using the UI. You can always X out of this. What you're probably one going to do is create a collection to get started, because when you come in here, you won't see anything. So I'll just create a collection called YouTube video, and there's tons of properties you can set here if you care about the particulars of how this collection is physically instantiated in the Oracle database, but this is really the only required um, attribute when creating a new collection. So I've created this collection, and I have over here sort of like a query or filtering interface. So instead of writing a select statement to get collections, I'm sorry, to get documents out of my collection, I provide um, a JSON um, document or a JSON string that describes uh, the documents that I want retrieved from the collection. So in this case, there's nothing in here. Um, so even though I have this open close bracket, which is basically a select star from, nothing is coming back. So I could upload um, one or more JSON files from my local operating system into the collection, or I can click on the new um, button to create a new um, document from scratch. So this could be as bad as my uh, JSON skills allow. So I only have one document in the collection. I'm asking to see everything in it, and I have it listed here below. If I double click down here, I get a full screen editor, and I could come in here and add something to it. Now, if I wanted to bring back a specific record, I just describe that record up here, and I could say two, and nothing comes back because I don't have anything in there of ID2. So that's a very boring uh, collection and document. Let's look at something a little bit um, more interesting. So I have a collection here called Jeff, 
inside of Jeff, I've got about 100,000 documents that represent all of my tweets from my That Jeff Smith Twitter account. So I've got a quick browse here of like the first 100 or so documents. And again, I can double click on one of these to see actually what's in here. This one's not that interesting. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at this one. This one's more interesting. So you can see how flexible JSON is. I can have multiple nested arrays, all kinds of fun things in there. And if you need a bit of an overview of what's in my JSON document or how these are structured, we give you a visual overview. We kind of make it look like a relational diagram. And even to get it to fit on one screen is kind of hard, but you can see how much nesting is going on here in the Twitter API um, to store your tweets. So if I wanted to pull in something interesting here, oh, what could we do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control Space Bar. And what this will do is it'll pull up all of the different attributes in my JSON document to make it really easy to build um, these queries. Let's pull up my boss, who I think is just in there is Chris Rice. So here are all the tweets where I've mentioned my boss. So I can do more interesting patterns than this. This is just a simple, this uh, attribute, um, any of the items in the array of screen name where it's equal to Chris Rice. I've got some functions I can call. They're a little bit closer to SQL. So here's one, greater than or equal to. So it was saying something called age. This is just an example. It's greater than or equal to 45. But I don't want to do age. I'm very vain. Let's pull up tweets that I've had retweeted. Uh, retweet count is greater than or equal to 45. There we go. So here are all the tweets where I've had more than 45 retweets. So here are my retweet counts, 59, oh, 69. So notice how Twitter's storing this as a string, which is kind of interesting, but okay, they can do that. I can come in here and say, hey, let's add an order by clause. So I'm going to give the database a bit of a helping hand here. I'm going to say, hey, I want to... Order this by retweet count, but I'm giving a heads up to the engine that retweet count is not a string. It's in fact a number. And I want a descending sort. So now I can see for all the tweets that I've tweeted, uh, the most popular one was this one. Retweet count 69. And the next one, 63. And if I'm more interesting, I can again double click on one of these. And I could even uh, find the ID. It's an integer with that. Here's that popular tweet. So I actually use a dump of my Twitter personal data loaded into an Oracle database um, to find my tweets, because I've got over 100,000 tweets. It's hard for me to find stuff. So I find this really, really useful. So things to keep in mind here. We have the insight. So you can just do control space bar, and it'll pull up the um, functions that you have available to you to, do, to use to filter 
stuff. And you also have access to all of the structure of the JSON document that we see inside um, the data that you have here. So this is all live in the Oracle Autonomous Database Cloud services. So you can use this in Autonomous Data Warehouse, Autonomous Transaction Processing, the JSON um, document um, autonomous service or any 19C or higher Oracle database that you have ORTS configured with. So I'm running this on one of my internal systems, but I could easily toggle over here to my cloud interface. And you can see in my always free transaction processing system, um, other things that I have. So here's a, a dump of my untapped um, data. And here's something called City Station, which is an open source um, data set from New York City. And what else could we have in here? Here's a little data set that our um, JSON architect is building um, to um, use for a hands on lab to see how cool working with JSON in the Oracle databases. But I want to go back to my local instance and give you folks a preview of a couple more additional enhancements that we're making um, to this interface. So yes, we have this ability to store your JSON documents in the Oracle database. And no, you don't have to think about things like tables and rows in SQL. But hey, if you've got these collections and documents in an Oracle database, wouldn't it be great if we could also use SQL um, to work with this stuff? Um, and even if you're a diehard NoSQL, I think everyone admits that at the end of the day, SQL or SQL is one of the most popular interfaces for getting data out of uh, a data store. And obviously, Oracle has a very powerful SQL engine, so it should be possible to have the best of both worlds. I should be able to store things as uh, JSON documents and use the uh, Mongo kind of style Soda JSON APIs, or I should also be able to use SQL. And we're going to make that much easier in an update here coming out in a few weeks. So if I come in here and look at this document, or this collection of documents, it's pretty easy to see. It's just a take on um, the employees table. So kind of boring, but sometimes boring is better to demonstrate stuff. So the first thing I want to show is this new button here that you're going to see, new collection view. So this is going to allow me to create a relational view over these JSON documents. So the first thing I need to do is give it a name. And now I need to start adding the columns that I want included in the view. So I'm just going to say for giggles, let's add all of them. You might not want to do this for you know something like that Twitter uh, JSON dump because you'd have dozens if not hundreds of things in here and you might not want them. So probably the first thing I would do is order this the way I want. So maybe I want to see, oh, I don't know, first name first. So I select that field, bring it up, the last name, and I always like to put the IDs that don't mean anything to me at the bottom. And yeah, okay. So the next thing I need to do is tell the view how wide these columns are going to be. So for the strings, it's looking at the first few records and it's guessing how wide these are. You know, this data isn't strictly typed in the dictionary. That's one of the beauties of JSON is how flexible it is. So when I start querying this stuff out, if I ask for the first seven characters, that might not be enough. So I'm going to overwrite these and just say, hey, they're 25 for the strings at least. Um, the numbers, this is a preview of what the numbers look like in terms of size. Um, if I don't change these, when we go and look at the code being used, the numbers will just be referred to as numbers. I can change the precision there if I want. This is the SQL that's going to be used behind the view that we create. 
So you can see it's relatively a simple syntax, but what I'm gonna do is use this select statement that we've created using this dialog to physically create a view. Um, so I can actually test this to make sure the data comes back the way that I want. So we'll just double check that the thing's named the way I want it to be. You see that the column names are uppercase. So just like you would expect to see in an Oracle table or a view, and we're gonna say create. So it's created something called imps JSON view two. So if I come over to my SQL worksheet, I can simply do select star from imps So now I'm not limited by my knowledge of the uh, JSON or SODA APIs. I can use all of the SQL that I've been using for the last 20 years. And underneath, it's interrogating the documents in the JSON document store. But at the, as the end user, if I give someone access to this view, they're just going to treat it as any other table, and they're going to use all of the SQL um, skills that they have access to. Um, if I come back to my JSON interface, let's say I come back to my tweets. We keep a history of everything that I've ran before. So here again is that filter I ran, it's asking for retweet count sorted by number of retweets. We're using SQL under the cover, so we're making API calls to the to the Soda Soda interface that Ords makes available, but at the end of the day, the database engine itself is translating those API calls to SQL. Wouldn't it be cool to see that actual SQL? Well, if you click this button, here is the SQL that the database runs to satisfy this soda filtering request. So I think that's kind of nice too. Finally, um, let's talk about performance. So. Performance is always key. Who cares how easy the accesses are if it takes forever to get your data back? So if I'm running these collection filters frequently in my APIs, maybe the first thing you want to do in your app is show someone their data sorted by something or with some sort of predicate attached. Um, the database is going to be able to run that request more efficiently if there's an index available more often than not. So. We were also adding um, the ability to easily define indexes on your collections. So I can right click here on Jeff and bring up the indexes dialog. And you can see that I've already created an index called Jeff tweet ID. So if I ever do a sort on ID, which I might want to do um, because uh, I want my uh, tweets to come back in um, numerical order, then it would be useful if that information can bring up be brought up quickly. If I want to create a new index, I need to give it a name. And they got a couple index types. I'm going to say functional. Can't remember what all of the different attributes are. So I'll come in here and say I want to index And let's not do mentions, let's do retweet count since that's the one that we were actually demoing. So this is the one we want to activate. So it's telling me, hey, you've, collect, um, you've selected one attribute. If you want to select more, you need to enable this composite index feature, which just in Oracle allows you to have an index on a, on a number of columns, or in this case, a number of attributes. I don't want to do a composite index, so I'm just going to create this one. Yep. So now I have these two um, indexes that have been created in the database, retweet count and tweet ID. So I've got this thing here. I'm, I'm doing this sort and I'm doing this search on this attribute. Let's see if the index is actually being used. 
So the easiest way to do that right now is to get the SQL. Come back over to the SQL worksheet. There we go. So there's three tweets that are stored in this JSON document. And I want to see if that index was being used. So I'll just do explain plan. There we go. My index is being used to satisfy this query by example. So to API call, at the end of the day, it goes into a table. And now we can take advantage of that index that was just created. If you want to learn more about the feature and you're inside the tool, you can just click the Help button. Very nice overview of everything we've talked about today is here. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.